What does this lick? This lick. And this lick. All have in common? If you guessed that they are all made from the pentatonic blue scale, you're 100% correct. Welcome to Pentatonic Scale Mastery Volume 2. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of this information that I release every Tuesday. Let's get into it. So Pentatonic Scale Mastery Volume 1 covered the first pentatonic scale pattern and everything you need to know to memorize it and to use it musically. So let's just move straight into the second pentatonic scale pattern in this volume. And the thing to remember is that all these scales overlap. So the end of one scale is going to be the beginning of another scale pattern. So moving up the fretboard, and we're going to keep this in C. C will now be our root, and our pentatonic pattern looks like this. And adding in our blues note, we get the blue scale by doing this. Right? If we're seeing, if we're viewing this as a major pentatonic scale, C is our root, we're adding the flat three as our blue note. Now we can also view that as a minor pentatonic, and A would be our root in that case. So if we were viewing A as our root, that blue note would be our flat five. So once again, we want to view this pentatonic blue scale pattern as being both major and minor, so we can use it in both instances. So if we are going to view it as a major scale, then C will be our root, and that will relate to this E major bar chord form. And if we're going to view it as minor, then A minor is our relative minor, there's our root A, and that's going to relate to this D minor chord form. And just like before, we want to learn both the chord form and the arpeggio so that we have the three very important pieces of information that you always need to know. Scale shape, scale pattern, chord form, and arpeggio. So, C major. What's our arpeggio? Looks like this. I like to put this third back on. Even though it's not technically in the scale pattern, I throw it in up there. The A minor arpeggio will start on the fourth string because that's our lowest A. It's always good to start and stop on your root, get that firmly implanted. It's going to look like this. And you can fall down to get that root and let's make sure we can go back up. So an interesting thing to note when you view these scales as major or minor, you actually have to flip all of the degrees in your mind so that you're viewing all these notes as revolving around a new root. Like I said, if you're in major, that blues note would actually be a flat three, right? That's the flat three of C major. Flat three. Uh, and it's the flat five when viewed from the minor perspective. Now, another important thing, or interesting thing anyways, is that if you're viewing it from minor, you have a whole minor 7 arpeggio within that minor pentatonic scale. So it's good to know your minor 7th as well. So you could, instead of just playing a triad, root, 3rd, 5th, you could actually throw in the flat 7 as well and make it a full minor 7, and all those notes belong in your minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> Tried to slow down a little bit therefore you realize I was playing a little fast. Now the same thing cannot be said though when you view it from the major perspective. If you view the pentatonic scale from its major perspective it doesn't have the seventh. It, it's, it's taken out. It's only a root third fifth available to you. Root third fifth what would be the seventh is gone. So it's a little bit ambiguous there. That's why the major pentatonic can be used over a major chord or a dominant seven chord because that seventh degree is what distinguishes a major seven from a dominant seven. So if you got, remove it, 
with the major pentatonic, you can use it over both those chord qualities. Now an important thing here that I want to point out is a lot of students at about this stage start saying, whoa, a lot of information, how can I memorize this? And when they start moving it around trying to transpose, it just blows their minds. But what you have to remember is there's nothing different going on here than what you've already learned. Everybody's familiar with that pentatonic scale pattern one, so that if something's in A minor, you go grab, and if something's in C major, right, you could play the exact same thing. Everybody knows that. It's no different. You're, it's just that you're not used to playing the, the pattern in a new position, but it's the same information. You're still just viewing a scale that can work in two different instances. Now, as far as getting this pattern under your fingers so that it's ready to use, going up and down is going to be your best friend. Just straight up and straight down as many times as it takes to get it really fluid. Using alternate picking or legato is okay, but uh, alternate picking. You could legato. Right? It gives both hands a bit of a workout while you're learning the pattern. Now, both of those sequences that I gave you in volume one, make sure you bring them up and you apply them to this new pattern. And here's another one for you as well, in case you want a new one. Now, don't just get locked into playing one pattern all the time. What we're doing by studying these patterns systematically is hopefully unlocking the fretboard a bit for you so that you're free to move around within these patterns. So start practicing them together as a unit. So we could go up the first pattern that we learned and down the second one and vice versa. Okay, and we can do the same thing with those arpeggios. So our C major arpeggio, stringing those together is going to look like this. And stringing our A minor together is going to look like this. Now let's start seeing what we can do with this scale pattern, and especially when we start mixing it with the other scale pattern that we learned. So a very classic idea is to start in pentatonic pattern one and slide into pent pentatonic pattern two. Okay, um, that creates licks like this. Another really cool lick, and this is used quite often in the blues, comes straight out of scale pattern two that we just learned. And now if you go over that scale pattern on our top two strings, okay, we've got our nice flat three if you're viewing it as major or flat five as minor, but we've got that nice blues note out there on the 11th fret. So we can utilize that because we know that that's our flat three or flat five. So half a step up has to be our major three or perfect fifth. So we can utilize that by lowering a bend, a whole step and a half step and really nailing that fifth. Okay, other things that you can do. Okay, so you can grab two strings at the same time. Okay, and now another thing that's cool is in that lick that I just played, you can play notes that are outside of that scale but bend into notes that are in the scale. So these two notes are in our scale. You could hit this one and bend up. Right? So you get that little blues lick like this. One last concept that I'm going to leave you with is the concept of repeating shapes within these scale patterns. 
Now, what do I mean by that? If we went to our first pentatonic scale box and took our middle two strings, we have a G, A, C, and D. Well, this shape, we can take it up into the next two string sets of the next pattern. G, A, C, D. Same notes, just octaves apart. Okay, but that friendly little shape using fingers one and three, easy to play, and we can make any lick that we play a little bit longer, a little bit more flowing. Well, thanks for watching. You've successfully completed volume two. In volume three, we're gonna add yet another pentatonic pattern. There's gonna be more arpeggios, more chord forms. You're well on your way to mastery.